the five hour rule. Maybe you replace Netflix with learning. Maybe you replace social media, <clears throat> everybody. It could be life changing for you. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to think outside the box and why it's so important for you to think outside the box with everything that happens to be going on right now. So in order to, to actually go in and, and tell you why this is important, I'm actually to start with a story. So in the early 1900s, there was a guy who owned a, a fast food company. And in this fast food company, the, he was literally like the type of person that was so analytical. He had fully optimized his business. And this is a true story. And so literally to the point where he went through every single aspect of the business and he thought to himself, how can I optimize this? And so it was a burger place. And so he went in and looked at the burgers and he said, okay, if I look at the buns, if I look at the meat, if I look at the tomatoes, the cheese, if I look at every single aspect from how I order it, how it gets here, how it's stored, how it's cooked, how it's put together, how they wrap it up, how it gets delivered to the customer at the, at the counter, is there ways that I can optimize this? And so we optimized every single process of making the burger. Then he went through every single process of making the fries, every single process that he could. And he goes, okay, now that the food is fully optimized, what about the soda machines? How can I optimize the soda machines to make sure that we get the most out of our soda machines or as fast as possible? And this is where fast food came from is there were these people that had burger places and they wanted to make them as fast as they possibly could versus having sit down. So he starts figuring out how he can get better, how he can get better, how he can get better. How can I make sure that the cashiers check people out more efficiently and we can make as much money as possible? So he goes through, literally optimizes his entire business. And then he goes, I don't know how to make anything faster. I don't know how to optimize anymore. And so him and his business partner are brainstorming. And he's like, you know what I'm, I think I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna start going to other businesses in other industries outside of the food industry and just see what they do and see if I get ideas. And his business partner's like, well, I don't, that doesn't really make sense why you would do that because it makes more sense for you to go and see other people in the food industry and see what they're doing. He's like, well, I've already done that. I'm gonna start going to other industries and see what they're doing. So what does he do? He starts going to grocery stores. Then he decides he wants to start going to libraries. Then he goes to all of these different places. And one day he goes to a bank and he walks into a bank and he's like, hey, you know, I, I'm, I'm down the street, I have a, a food company. And I want to just see what you guys do and see if I can get some ideas of maybe I can help you guys in some sort of way. Maybe you can help me in some sort of way. They're like, yeah, I guess that's fine. You know, you can shadow the manager for the day. And um, right in the morning as he's shadowing the manager, he's like, hey, there's people that are doing construction outside. What are they doing? And he goes, oh, we're going to build something called a drive through This is the early 1900s. We're going to build something called a drive through so that people don't have to get out of their cars in order to come in and actually start to you know, in order to, to come in and actually get money or deposit money, whatever it is, we're going to, need to allow them to actually stay in their car in order to put money in whatever it is they need to do here at the bank. And he thought to himself, oh my God, I never thought of optimizing my business that way. I've been trying to optimize my business by everything that I know in the food industry. And when someone comes in, but I never thought about optimizing the customer's experience so that it's faster for them so they don't have to get out of their cars. And so he went back to his, his, uh, his business partner. He said, we've got to make this thing called a drive-through. And he's like, what is that? Explains the whole process to him. He's on board. You know, they got to take out one of the walls and put up windows and they got to switch a lot of stuff around. He does this and fully optimizes the drive-through process. And a few years later, for millions of dollars in the early 1900s, ends up getting bought by McDonald's. McDonald's obviously started using drive throughs Now drive throughs are known like crazy. Now, why do I tell you this story? It's because this guy tried to optimize every version of his life, everything that he possibly could in his business. But what happened is he started going outside of his industry, outside of what he knew so that he could learn much more. Everything was already fully optimized. He decided to learn from other industries. And I learned this from a guy named Jeff Hoffman. Jeff Hoffman is a billionaire. He founded Priceline.com. And he calls some, he, he does this thing called info sponging. And info sponging is where he takes time every single day to learn something that has nothing to do with his business. Nothing to do with his business. And what he does is he takes time every single day and he takes a three by five card. So he'll read, you know, a chapter of a book that has nothing to do with his industry. He'll read a magazine that's from a completely different industry. He'll read and learn and try to grow that has nothing to do with his industry. And then what he'll do is he'll get a three by five card and he'll summarize what he learned for the day 
in this this event he calls info sponging he'll write down on a three by five card what it is that he learned and what he liked about it and then he'll just forget about it he takes that three by five card he throws it inside of a shoebox and at the end of every single month he takes out the shoebox and he looks through all of the cards and thinks about how can i use this in my life or how can i use this in my business and sometimes most of the time he can't use it in his business in any sort of way it doesn't make any sense but one day he was reading through and he, he was looking through his boxes and he looked through and he read an article earlier that month and it said it was talking about how bananas when bananas get closer to their expiration date and they're about to go bad they're right but they're about to go bad they become cheaper and the reason why is because the grocery stores want to make sure that banana get sold to somebody or else they lose money on it. And so they lower the prices of bananas so that therefore they can make sure that they make their money and they don't lose any money. And he thought to himself, oh my God, I think I can use this. And so at that point in time, he was in the airline industry and he was his company at that point in time was actually the company that developed uh, the, the kiosk. So you can actually check yourself in, get your, your flight taken, you know, your, your, your boarding pass printed out, all of that stuff. So his company was in that industry and he was in the airline industry. He thought to myself, okay, now if you look at it, you might say airlines, bananas, airlines, bananas, airlines, bananas, that doesn't make any sense. And so what he did though, is he said, when, air, when, when bananas are about to go bad, they become cheaper. And then he said, I wonder if the closer and closer and closer it gets to a flight taking off, if the open seats become cheaper. So because of the fact that he had connections in the airline industry, he went to Delta. He went to American, he went to United, he went to every single company that he could that was in the airlines and he said, hey, I'm curious, how often do you have seats that are not sold? And they're like about 10 to 15% of the seats on all of the flights that we have are never sold. And he said, how much would you be willing to sell those for it? If, if, a, price, if a, a flight is $500, what would you be willing to take instead of having an empty seat? You know, knowing that the person's gonna have luggage, no, all of this stuff, let's work it in. He sits down at the airlines and he finds out the perfect amount of how much it would be worth for them. And so what he does is he develops Priceline.com. Priceline.com, the way that they became famous is that they had a, you know, offer your own price. And so as the flights got closer and closer and closer, people could make an offer. So if the flight is normally $500, they could say, listen, I'll pay $400 and that's my bid. I'll pay $300 and that's my bid. And the bid would then go to the airline companies and they would say to themselves, is this worth it? Is it not worth it? And they would either accept or decline. And if they accepted it, you had to buy that flight. It was your card was automatically charged. There was nothing that you could do. There were no refunds. And so what happened is he built a multi-billion dollar company off of the idea that he got from reading an article about bananas. And you would never think that's something that would happen. And so what I, the reason why I'm bringing all this up is because I want to challenge you to learn about stuff that doesn't make any sense for you at this point. I wanna challenge you to do this. And this brings us to what's called the five hour rule. Okay, the five hour rule is the idea with the world changing as much as it is, with things happening, I just did an episode on, on how much the world is changing and how if you don't adapt, you're gonna be left behind. With the world changing as much as it is, how do we keep up? And the five hour rule makes it super simple. Here's what the five hour rule is. Every single day, you should spend, Monday through Friday, you should spend one hour reading and learning and growing, five days per week. So five days a week, all you have to do is read, learn and grow, preferably outside of your industry, but you can also you know, learn inside of your industry if you don't feel like you've perfected your industry. And what you do, and I'm gonna take the five hour rule, and I'm also gonna take the info sponging, I'm gonna put them together, is have a stack of three by five cards. Read something, see how that could work for you. Write it down that three by five card, and when you're done with it, you put it inside of a shoebox, you put it wherever it is, leave it, you know, just have a stack on top of your desk, whatever it is. And at the end of every single month, flip through those cue cards, flip through all of them and see if there's something in there that you can pull into your life. If you're a business owner, this could be massive for you to keep ahead of the competition. If you're somebody who is just going to college and learning and growing, this could be massive for you for thinking outside of the box and thinking differently in everything that you do. So the five hour rule is to spend, you know, one hour per day, Monday through Friday, learning. Where this came from was Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin did this every single week, right? If you want to constantly stay on top, 
you've got to constantly push yourself to learn and grow. And, you know, it's a commitment to being a student and always learning. And if you look at the, the people that, that our society looks up to the most, so the type of people who they seem to know everything, right? They're so well read. They seem so they're so well versed in everything that they have. If you look at Oprah, if you look at Warren Buffy, if you look at Tony Robbins, you look at Elon Musk, anybody that you look at and you're like, wow, that person seems to know a lot. The thing that tends to be the common denominator, even though they're all in different industries, is that they all have a commitment to learning and growing and never resting on the laurels of their success. The difference between, you know, what I, what I have seen from a lot of successful people that I know and successful, unsuccessful people that I've seen is that unsuccessful people tend to just think that they know it all to rest in the laurels of their success and to never go, you know what, I'm going to try to push myself to be better. And the people who are successful act like they aren't successful at all. They act like they don't have any money. They act like they've, they're, they're the type of person who doesn't have anything. They never rest in the laurels of their success. They're constantly trying to learn. They're constantly trying to grow. And that commitment to being a student is what helps them out. Now, here's what happens. In the short term, that hour is going to take away from everything that you do. Like that's just a fact. That hour is going to take away from an hour of productivity today, an hour of productivity tomorrow, Monday through Friday. But in the long term, the knowledge that is gained from it will be massive for you. The knowledge that is gained from it will be life-changing for you because you will be so far ahead a year from now, you will be so far ahead of every single person that's around you that you're going to be different. You're going to think different. Now, if you do this for two years, three years, five years, 10 years, could be life-changing for you. You're going to be way different than everyone in your industry and everyone that you have around you. But the key to it is this, is to think about how this relates to your life and to think about when would the best time for me to do this be? When's the best time for you? When is it during the day? For me, it's usually late afternoon or late morning is, is the best time for me. That's it. You look at it and you say, okay, the late afternoon is when I'm going to do it. Usually about 10 to 11 o'clock is when I, I feel like my brain's working the best. And that's when I want to push myself to learn, right? Maybe for you, it's the same time. Maybe for you, it's six o'clock in the morning before the kids wake up. And that's just when you have quiet time. And that's when you, you know, decide that you like to learn and grow. Maybe it's before you go to bed. You just, you dedicate an hour to yourself. Instead of watching Netflix, you decide, you know what? The last hour is going to be dedicated towards my own growth, my own knowledge, everything that I do. Maybe you replace Netflix with learning. Maybe replace social media, <clears throat> everybody. Replace social media with learning. Think about what I, what I want to challenge everybody to do is to take your phone and at the end of the month, go through or end of the week, when you get that report that says how much time you spent on your phone and everything, look back and see how much time you spent on social media. Look back and see how much time you spent on YouTube. And if you're using YouTube for, for growing, then that's fine. But think about the ways that you waste time on this little device, this little phone, and think, what would happen if I replaced some of that time with learning? What would happen if I replaced some of that time with growing? What would happen if I replaced some of that time with pushing myself to be better? Think about that. So where can you fit it in? Where can you fit it in your day? And where can you fit it in with stuff that you're normally doing? It's never that you don't have enough time. It's just not a priority for you. Your learning should always be a priority for you. So that's the first aspect of it. Then I wanna pivot and talk about what should you be learning right? So if you think about what should you be learning, the first question I have for you is where do you want to go? In your life, where do you want to go? In five years, where do you want to be? In 10 years, where do you want to be? In 15 years, where do you want to be? And you think about that future that you want and the future person that you want to be. And then you ask yourself, in order to get there, in order to have the business that I want, in order to have the family that I want, in order to have the relationships that I want, the finance that I want, all of those things, in order to have those, what do I need to learn? And you find out what you need to learn. And then from there, now you have a pretty good idea of the stuff that you should start reading, the people that you should start pulling yourself around, putting yourself around, the, the knowledge that you should get into your head. Okay, where do I want to go? What do I need to know to get there? That's where you start. And the important thing is to realize that if you just learn, five hours a week, that's not much. There's a lot of time. I think it's around 164 hours, something like that, 168 hours that are in a, an entire week. You're telling me you can't spend five hours dedicated to your learning, to your growing, to your becoming better? You absolutely can. We all can. We could all find time where we're wasting time, you know, <laughs> 
what if you were to just literally go, you know what, every time I go to the bathroom and I, I decide to go number two, I'm gonna take a book with me around X, Y, Z, and that's what I'm gonna learn. I'm sure you spend you know, a pretty good amount of time there every single day, 10, 15, 20 minutes on the bathroom, right? There's some time right there for you. Netflix, if you were to get rid of it, there's some time right there for you. Social media, if you were to get rid of it or just at least lower it, there's some time there for you. There's always time to learn and grow and get better. And I think people know, actually I know people know they should be learning, but I think people underestimate the value of the long-term results that you'll get from taking time and investing into yourself because there is no better ROI than putting time, money, energy, attention into your own development. Whatever it is that you want to learn at, whether it's business, whether it's self-development, whether it's, you know, creating a better relationship with your spouse, whether it's being a better parent, there's always time available to you. So if you think that there's not any time, I would challenge you to find where that time is. It's there. You just haven't made it a priority yet. Because when you sit down and you learn and grow, years down the road, you're going to notice you're a completely different person. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. It's all a game and you're in the game. You've got to figure out some way to play it.